Joining me from here in Washington is Philip Brenner. He is a professor emeritus at American University's School of International Service. Professor, thank you so much for joining our program today. My pleasure. Well, upon his resignation, Raul Castro said, quote, as long as I live, I will be ready with my foot in the stirrup to defend the homeland. Would you say this statement makes it pretty clear that he'll still be calling the shots, at least when it comes to major issues? I don't think he'll call the shots. For one thing, he's going to be moving to Santiago, about 700 miles away from Havana. He's building a large house there. Um, I think he will be consulted like an elder statesman, um, but he's not going to call the shots. Uh, I think he wouldn't be leaving if he didn't have confidence in the new leadership. And most Cubans alive today have never had a leader who wasn't a Castro. So what do you think will be the legacy of the Castro's time in power over these, these decades? Well, Cubans are very dissatisfied with current conditions. Uh, Cuba has suffered a significant downturn in its economy. Uh, and some of the things that people used to take for granted uh, no longer are available. Uh, even good health care is suffering to some extent. Um, I think what people want is more stability and growth. Um, and uh, they, the new administration is going to have to uh, prove themselves if they're going to gain any legitimacy. Now, on the surface, Miguel Diaz-Canel displays a, a much different public image than Castro. He's a, he's a regular on social media. Even his attire is much more casual. Do you think that will connect with the younger generation in Cuba? And also, what will his approach be? So we already know what his, the connection is, because he's been president for the last two and a half years. Um, it, it's important to recognize that what's happening today uh, this weekend is the party Congress is picking a new first secretary, who will likely be Miguel, Miguel Diaz-Canal. Uh, but that doesn't mean that there's going to be a very big change in the government. Uh, Miguel Diaz-Canal will continue as president, and he has not had a good rapport with the younger generation. Um, he lacks a kind of simpatico politics. He doesn't have an instinctual politics. He's an engineer. Uh, he came up through the party as a party bureaucrat. Um, and so he lacks that sense of charismatic leadership that people might be looking for. But I think they'll accept him if, in fact, he can carry out the plans for reform that they're proposing in the party. And those are quite significant. Really quick, uh, less than a minute to go. Cuba is dealing with a, a lot of challenges. What do you think the, the biggest challenge will be? The biggest challenge is feeding its people. Uh, it imports two-thirds of its food right now, crazy for an agricultural country, and it uses up hard currency doing so. It's just announced 63 measures to improve their food production, but also the United States is a big issue on their agenda. And right now, it doesn't look like there's going to be much change. Professor Emeritus Philip Brenner with American University, thank you, sir, for joining us.